Hey everyone, this is Amy with the Charlotte Mason Plenary and I am here today interviewing Rachel Lebowitz, the founder, the queen bee, the leader of a Charlotte Mason Plenary about her classes this spring at a Charlotte Mason Plenary's online Charlotte Mason co-op. Super exciting. What, what an intro. Okay. <laughs> I had to build it up. <laughs> Uh, no, we are definitely excited about the classes for the spring yes, semester. Yes, you are. You have several that you're teaching this semester. Um, I saw Plutarch, yeah. and I saw one on artist and folk songs. Yes. And then there was another one, too. Um, well, so if you count the co-op gatherings, you and I are doing the 20 principles study via Maybe zoom that's yeah yes that's, yes that's a lot of discussions doing. for the 20 yes. principles which, that's which will be super like awesome for parents yes because the 20 principles we've talked many times that it just kind of changes your life it changes Absolutely. you as a parent as a homeschool person parent it changes you as a person yes. so and you get it for the great price of like what ten dollars a month yeah yeah, joining the co-op, super, super, uh, we wanted to keep everything affordable for everybody. So uh, yeah, so that's part of the membership. You get all those um, uh, gatherings, as I call them, CM gatherings um, with your membership. And so we're gonna do, do the 20 principles. We're also doing a homeschool planning session, you know, and I wanna bring everybody in and, and you know, all the teachers talk about how they do their planning you know, and you talk all about different. Yeah. And we can all glean ideas from each other. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, just our afternoon teas and our ask a CM expert, all those are in the co-op membership, but you get a lot of community, but also lot. it's behind a small paywall so that that way we also protect the privacy of that community. Yes. Yes. Private. Um, and community. Those are definitely two key words. <laughs> they are. They're very important to both of us. Yes. Okay. So you've also got a pre recorded fall class that you taught on Plutarch as well. True. Last semester, you did a different story, right? Yes. We did the life of Publicola in the That's fall. Right. Yeah. That's the one that I can't pronounce. And by the way, we had some excellent reviews on that class. Uh, let's see. We had one that said, our 15-year-old son has thoroughly enjoyed this class. It has been a fun way for him to learn about Plutarch's lives, expanding on his history knowledge and incorporating art as well. Rachel has made this approachable and allowed me to take the subject off my plate. It's one that I love, but have found it difficult at times to facilitate in our homeschool. And we had another review from Chris. Awesome class. Our 16-year-old was unsure about the class when I suggested it. However, he found himself looking forward to every class and really enjoyed the discussions on history and government. Our son is a photographer, and the art aspect really challenged him in his own photography as well. So those are like, you know, music to my ears, because to get a a teenager or anybody to love Plutarch, that's like my ultimate goal. You know? I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't want kids to suffer through Plutarch or moms. I don't want anybody <laughs> suffering through Plutarch. Um, I want you to love it because it's so fascinating and it's so interesting. And there's so many connections um, to modern day and to our everyday lives um, mm -hmm. that, yeah, that's the goal, you know, to yeah. to instill a love of Plutarch. <laughs> well, let's talk about Plutarch in general for just a minute, because guys, if you have not been to a conference with Rachel, which I'm guessing most of you haven't, but I got an up close and personal view this last summer about seeing Rachel like totally on Plutarch and telling everybody about how amazing it is and why everyone should study it. And we had the Cersei Institute come by our booth. They're like, wow, this is pretty cool stuff that you have here. Rachel is like really in love with Plutarch. By the time we left, I was like, huh, I wasn't really looking forward to adding this to our schedule, but now I'm kind of like, oh, this might be kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I converted a few people, right? Uh, <laughs> converted a few. <laughs> um, so go ahead and tell us, why is Plutarch so important and so amazing? Because you talk about this all the time, but some people have no idea. 
Well, yeah, and we're going to talk about it again in um, was in July in the at the Texas conference, um, the the great oh, yeah. Home convention conferences. Yeah, that that we are privileged to be speakers at. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll be talking about it there. So y'all come out and see us at the Texas conference in Austin. Anyway, um, won't help you with this semester though, but she's going to tell yeah. you now. That way yeah. you'll know. So 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 Plutarch is. Charlotte Mason had Plutarch in the curriculum for not just once or twice, but every term, and that's she had three terms a year. So that's three times a year for like five or six years. Wow. So yeah, so to me that says, hey, pay attention. This is really important. I place a lot of value on that, you know? So mm -hmm. <clears throat> um so the reason that Charlotte had it so often, um, it's all about character. So she mm. places it under citizenship and um, under citizenship, you're learning about government, you're learning about a couple other things, but you're also learning about character um, and informing your own character. You know, as we read these stories, these living books and living ideas about these famous people throughout history, um, we are getting an insight into their character. And Plutarch is fabulous at that because, um, you know, he's a lot of people refer to him as a historian, like an ancient Greek historian. OK, so Plutarch lived like 2000 years ago. Um, and he wrote all these biographies of all these great Greek and Roman men, um, people that changed history, the course of history. And <clears throat> Um, so as we study these people, he, he's not necessarily a historian, he's really a biographer and mm -hmm. he gives us these little insights into the, the person's character. And he says, you know, that it's not really the big things that a person does in their life that, that mm -hmm. he wants to look at. He wants to look at the, the smaller instances and what those things tell us about character. And so when you're learning and looking at other people's character and different instances and where character comes out, you're also informing your own character and you're making your own decisions about character. You know, what's right, what's wrong? What do I, yeah, what do I wanna emulate? What inspires me? And so all of those kinds of discussions and connections and stuff come up in the class and I'm just talking your ear off. Um, <laughs> no, no, fantastic. Guys, she can do this for hours. If you come to the conference, you will hear it. Um, and it's amazing. It inspires me every time. And besides that, I mean, I love what you say about how Plutarch's focuses on the little things that led to the larger events. So, you know, a lot of times when we're talking with kids and stuff, or even if we're talking to ourselves, let's be honest there. Um, if we're really talking about character, we're talking about the day in, day out stuff. Like, you know, how you treat your brother is the kind of person that it's going to turn you into, yeah. you know, it may not be how you treat your friends, but how you treat your brother will inspire how you eventually treat other people. So it's those little everyday interactions that make such yeah. a big difference. And to have access to, you know, these kinds of stories where somebody has gone through and pointed out these kinds of things. Ooh, it's kind of exciting because sometimes people just go through a biography and they hit the, like the high points, the big points, the flashy moments, kind of like the things that would have been in a movie. But it's those little things that really make it happen. Yeah. And I also love that Plutarch doesn't, um, doesn't gloss over stuff and that that he point that he lets us see the bad decisions too. It's not all just, you know, yeah, it's not all glory yeah. and look how great this person was. It's it's the decisions that, you know, make you go, hmm, I don't know mm -hmm. if that was that a good thing for him to do. I'm not so sure, you know. Well, and you know, a lot of times in homeschool circles, um, when we're studying history, a lot of times, you know, kids are predisposed to this anyways, but we have this desire sometimes to want to um, paint people we study as being the good guys or being the bad guys. And it's really never that simple, is it? Yeah. No person is 
all one or the other. Um, so it's the little decisions that we make yeah. that lead to the impressions other people have about us. Yeah, and that can also um, teach people um, tolerance and forgiveness, and yes. you know all these important things to 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 see. Okay, well, we consider this person a great person and a great leader, but look, he did this bad thing or he did that bad thing, but overall, he was still a good person, you know. So. Or even a really bad person understanding where they came from, how they got to the bigger decisions. Yeah. That all can make you realize, wow, I did some of those things. Yeah. Well, all, and all of those are important um, aspects of Plutarch. And um, so exciting. Um, we, we had such fun in that Publica class in the fall, and we had such great discussions. And I love that the students, you know, <laughs> so I've been teaching Plutarch for many, many years. Um, I started a Plutarch and Shakespeare class here with our local CM co-op many years ago. And um, I love teaching teenagers. They're just, they're just so interesting. And I, I love, they are. I love the observations that they make and the questions that they have and those kinds of things. Um, and <clears throat> so to tell you a little bit about the class. So, oh, well, okay, so this, this semester we're doing um pericles mm -hmm. so the, and these are the guides pericles. you created yes these are the annotated plutarch guides that i write mm -hmm. uh, it includes the full text of well not the full text because i do edit for content and for length just as charlotte mason did in her schools charlotte mason used specially edited books that were published just for her schools um, of Plutarch, because you don't want to read unabridged Plutarch. There's too many instances that are inappropriate and it's very long. So, so um, anyway, so edited for length and content, but um, I also added lots of annotations so that it makes it easier. And we use the Long and Stewart translation. Mm -hmm. um, we don't use North, we don't use Dryden. And I've had lots of people ask me about that. Um, so when we first started studying Plutarch in my Plutarch class years and years ago, um, we were reading from the North translation. And, you know, I love Plutarch, but the kids, it was like deer in the headlights, right? They're like, uh, I have no idea what just happened, right? So asking for narrations is like crickets just there were there were no connections being made and it was so frustrating and so i started looking into other ways other translations and i came across the long and stewart translation and it's still from the 1800s so it still stretches the student a little bit but it's so much easier and it's a direct translation so it's more um it's more accurate it's yeah. easier and it's more accurate because north is a translation of a translation and it's very, very hard. I often say that reading North is harder than reading Shakespeare. Wow. Yeah. So if, because they lived in the same time period and actually Shakespeare took um, and based many of his historical plays off of Plutarch's um, mm -hmm. North's translation of Plutarch. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, um, so if you are reading Plutarch and it's like deer in the headlights and crickets week after week after week, then what is the point? It is just an exercise in frustration. And I don't want that for my students. I want them making connections and learning things. Mm -hmm. So so that's when I started making the, the annotated guides using that translation. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I lost my train of thought. But you also have an additional resource that goes with them, though, that you also made. And this one, so many people got excited about this when we were at the conference this summer. The, the, so, guys, hold on to your seats. <laughs> the picture study? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I came home with both of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so the picture studies. So, I don't know if, oh, here. I don't know if you guys know this. Wait. 
I think they're, yeah, they're right side up now. All right. So great artists throughout history, like so many other people, have been absolutely inspired and enthralled by Plutarch. Okay, so the stories that Plutarch writes are so interesting and fascinating that great, great artists like make these huge, gorgeous paintings and sculptures and all this other wonderful art based to, to illustrate what's going on in Plutarch's text. And so when you combine the text with, you know, a, a famous painting or a famous sculpture um, that for the Imitation. student, Imitation okay, is then, the highest okay. form of compliment. Yeah. So you this is really great. Compliment. <laughs> Here, I can't get it both on the but this is Rembrandt, okay? <laughs> Rembrandt is illustrating something out of Play Dark. Oh, um, yeah. So um these kinds of things are just really make it come to life and the students really really enjoy that and um, it facilitates so much more um, discussion and connections well and another thing i think that that brings up rachel with the art and the different translations and stuff is that i think some of our truly powerful stories each generation engages with them in a different way. And so when we bring all of these different engagements forward to a modern day class with teens where they're also getting to engage in it in their way, kind of like, you know, superhero stories, you know, they, they touch on ancient Greek and Roman mythology. Yes. Yeah. Get reinvented into comics and movies and who knows what else. Yeah. So and Plutarch's mentioned in movies. I've, I've heard that before yeah. myself. Yes. <laughs> There's a character named after him in the Hunger Games. <laughs> I had no idea. I just remembered a song from Seven Brides from Seven Brothers, the musical about saving women. Yes. <laughs> like that. Yeah. So um, I lost my train of thought again. <laughs> oh, <sorry about> <laughs> like, all these great resources of pictures and then the different translations. No, I, for, I remember what I was going to say. So you were talking about Throughout the generations, um, Plutarch touches each gener that these great stories, right? These great mm -hmm. stories um, seem to touch each generation. And for whatever reason, generations nowadays have lost touch with Plutarch. Uh -huh. uh, and that's a shame. And, you know, we've lost touch with a lot of important things I think of like Greek mm -hmm. and Roman mythology and Plutarch stories and things like that, because um, the, I mean, these are important informing ideas that, that let, especially kids, um, but adults too, let us confront difficult subjects mm -hmm. in, a, in a safe manner, yeah. right? it's a lot easier to confront a difficult subject while you're reading a book that it happens to pop up in and have that discussion than it is to have to face it in real life. Because as, as we as adults know, but maybe, you know, teens don't know yet, we hope we're, not. we're all going to face those hard life decisions, hard life tragedies, those hard life mm -hmm. circumstances, every one of us will be touched by something, you know, that mm -hmm. we wish we hadn't been, but that we will grow from. And so um, these kinds of hard discussions that come up in Plutarch are so important for those reasons as well. And, and you know, some parents shy away from those mm -hmm. hard things. And mm -hmm. I, I wish they they wouldn't um, mm -hmm. because you really are planting the seeds in a child's mind of, hmm, how would I deal with that situation? What's, yeah. what's the best way to deal with that situation if it ever happens to me? You know, You're giving them happens. inspiration. Yeah. Heroes are anti-heroes. Yes. 
you're, you're giving them those, as Charlotte Mason says, those important informing ideas that will shape their character for their lifetime. Well, and quite honestly, the best way to prepare your kids for the things that are difficult is to provide them with those kinds of influences in their lives, because like you said, they're going to have them. Yes, unfortunately, yes, we're, we all have those. Yeah. Um, so let's see, That's any cool. any other questions about Plutarch? We get a lot of questions about Plutarch, to be perfectly honest, and I think that it's because parents tend to find it a scary topic because a lot of us didn't learn about Plutarch when we were in school. And so it's kind of, oh, Plutarch, that sounds really big and scary. Um, so we've definitely had some questions. We actually have an entire thread in our Facebook community um, talking and answering some of those questions. So if you have questions, you should definitely head into our private Facebook community and yeah. join that thread and ask more questions. Um, I think, though, you've covered most of what we talked about um, that it's basically a discussion group for teens. The content has been moderated to make sure that, you know, it's appropriate for teens, not children, teens. Um, yes. and, and, and in general, I usually say that, you know, Charlotte started students um, studying Plutarch at around the fifth grade, so maybe around 10. I think that's too young. I don't know if it's a, if it's a, because of the times we live mm -hmm. in or what the difference is. But um, <clears throat> I think I think kids, number one, need to be probably at least 13 mm -hmm. um, or at least mature enough to handle some of these um, topics. Mm -hmm. And they're going to get more out of it in the teenage years anyway than they will from 10 to 12. Um, they'll make more connections and it'll sit better in in their spirits. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, 13 and up is yeah. what I usually say. And um, we read in class, but you know, if we if we have students who have reading difficulties or dyslexia or what, what have you, you're not re required to read in class. Mm -hmm. um, we always accommodate for the student. And I always, always um, praise effort. Um, rather than make you feel like you need to do something, you know, I don't want any students feeling pressured or uncomfortable. Um, and then, oh, no homework. <laughs> I want it to be as easy as possible uh, for both uh, students and moms, because I want y'all to love it. Um, so the only homework I give is at the end of the whole course, and it's it's optional, but most kids do it. Um, and it's just to give me, you know, like either a written or an oral narration of some questions, mm -hmm. um, connecting some things that we talked about and stuff. But well, um, and, um, we also get asked which one to start with. And I mean, you do have ideas about which one to start with. But I think in the context of your classes, um, having heard you talk about this, I would be inclined to say start with the live class, because I think that the discussion yeah. with the teens is invaluable. Listening in on a conversation is one thing, but participating in it. I mean, you're getting to participate in the story in a way with the active participation. Yeah, the, the live classes are great. The recorded classes are there if you need them. And, you know, like if you live on the other side of the world, I have a mom who's in, I don't know, I think she's, she's in Asia somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, the class is like at 2 a.m. their time. So... Yeah. <laughs> That's not cool. Yeah. But, but um, um, the live classes are fabulous. And also, I've had a lot of moms. Um, one mom sat in for a little while, and then I had a couple other moms like sit nearby mm -hmm. because I think it's great for moms too to to learn and to. Um, to let go of that intimidation, to mm -hmm. see, oh, okay, well, you know, I can do this. It's it's not that hard. <laughs> you you can do up ongoing conversations in your own home. Those yeah. uh, those great conversations that we're wanting to inspire with our kids. Yeah, you don't I have love to know it all yourself to inspire those great conversations. <laughs> yeah, one mom said, you know, that that her son would come to the dinner table and tell them all about the blue dark class, you know, so they got to learn about it too. And that was, that's cool. I love that. Mm -hmm. 
And then I give some research projects that are also optional, you know, like it, because you, you never know what teenagers are going to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> you never do. You never know. And um, so like I, in the, in Publicola, I gave them, I gave them just a little, like a little teaser. Oh, by the way, you know, did you know that there was a piece of art that we were studying? Do you know that this is connected to the French Revolution? And they're like, really? How? Oh, French Revolution? What? So I said, if you want, go look it up, you know. So the next class, I asked, so did anybody look up, you know, that that art piece and the French and one one student had and I was so I was like, oh, my gosh. Yay. OK. And so we had this fabulous conversation about how the French Revolution connected to Publicola, then how, you know, the American Revolution connects to Publicola, how um, the makings of and the catalysts for revolution in general, you know, and all these different conversations about different forms of government. And I, it's just, let me tell you, it's just fabulous. I love it. So never as simple as it seems on the surface. There's always yeah. so many more layers. There's um, so many layers. So before we, you know, run out of too much time here, I know. we need to start talking about this other class that you're teaching. I mean, we both love Plutarch. I haven't read all the Plutarch yet. I haven't even gotten to the guides yet, but I've heard Rachel talk about it enough that I already feel like we're becoming good friends. So tell us about this other class. Yeah, picture study and folk songs. Yay. So we're going to, so I wanted to do a joy subject in, in our local CM co-op. We haven't had it for a few years because of COVID, but I used to teach along with Plutarch and Shakespeare. I used to take pic, picture study and folk songs. I love, love picture study and folk songs. They're one of the, the joy subjects, you know, they're those, the subjects that, that let you breathe. That, that lower the stress levels in your homeschool, that increase the bonding that the people you're doing those activities with. So I love them. And so we're studying N.C. Wyeth for this one. He's an American artist. I love him. He um, was also a book illustrator, another reason to love him. And he just, he has fabulous, whoops, fabulous artwork like this. And well, um, art can add so much to the study of American history. Yes, King Arthur. Oof. Um, yeah, um, a whole he did a whole series on um, Native Americans and the the West. He traveled. Uh, so <clears throat> really wonderful artwork. Um, so we'll it'll be a super short class, and it's super inexpensive class too because. I noticed like, that. Yeah, because I wanted it to be kind of like a bonus, you know, like you're you're in the co-op with us. We're so thankful to have you. So here's this bonus class. It's only eight dollars. Come join us. Great deal. It's only eight dollars. Um, I mean, if you take if you do the co-op membership and take the um, artist study folk songs class. I mean, that's $18 a month. You're getting a private class for just moms. You're getting a class for your family on artists and folk songs that will really like speak to your soul. Yes. And then on top of that, you get a great online community with other resources as well. So it's really a good deal. And I just real quick, I wanted to show y'all that. So <clears throat> over the years, as we've done picture study and folk songs in our own home, my, my kids have, let me hold this up. My kids have kept um, a folder of all the artwork and stuff that we've studied. Mm -hmm. um, we we did uh, Andy Warhol. <laughs> oh, we did too. Yeah, fabulous. Oh, we, we had an Andy pictures. Warhol. We had an exhibit come to our local museum, so we had to do him. Anyway, yeah. So, um, my favorite. but so they also have all the folk songs in here. And so they'll go back and um, just grab their grab their um, notebooks and they'll just review all these fabulous pieces of art and um, uh, songs and just you know just sing. And it's just it's just wonderful. It really is. So 
So we're going to do some of these folk songs in the class. So half of the class, it's only going to be 30 minutes. So maybe 15 minutes will be devoted to picture study and then the last half to folk songs. And it'll just be just a wonderful, wonderful time for us to get together. Sounds Enjoy fantastic. Together. So, all right. So these are the classes and we've still got the um, pre-recorded blue chart, which we talked about as well. So. You need to go ahead and sign up because one, if you don't and there's not enough people to make a class, then you don't get it even if you wanted it and you just didn't say that you wanted it. So you got to say you want it by signing up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, let's see. Yes, yeah, so you got to sign up for the co-op and then for the classes themselves that you want. That lets us know that this is a class you want because if there's not enough students, then those classes don't always make. So do it today so that you can get it locked in. Yes, because classes start next Monday. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we I know. So yeah, sign up quick. Um, uh, yeah, I lost my train of thought again. <laughs> it's, okay. it's Monday. It's like Monday. Monday. <laughs> um, but yeah, sign up for the classes. Remember, Rachel has Plutarch, that's for teens. And then we've also got uh, artist study and folk songs that you can do together as a family for a great like bonus add on price. And yeah. that's it, guys. So go sign up now. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. I appreciate you. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye.